let's talk about how the game works. The object of the game is to be the first person to either slay three monsters or to assemble six different classes in your party. To start, you're going to separate the different types of cards into their own piles. Next, each player will then choose their own party leader card, laying it face up in front of them. These are the oversized light cards. After this, shuffle the standard size cards and deal five cards to each player. Put the rest of the cards in a draw pile, leaving room for a discard pile. At this point, you're going to shuffle the monster cards, the oversized dark cards, and flip Flip over the top three cards face up in the center of the table. Place the rest of the monster cards face down to create the monster deck. Now you're ready to start the game. You start your turn with three action points and you can use them to perform a myriad of actions in any order you'd like. With one action point, you can either draw a card from the main deck, play a hero, item, or magic card, or roll two dice to use the effect of a hero in your party. With two points, you can attack a monster card, and with three points, you can discard every card in your hand and draw five new cards. Your turn ends when you've either used up all of your action points, or you simply choose not to take any more actions. Unused points do not get added to your next round. Here's an example of what your play area will look like. You'll keep your party leader card in the bottom left corner, with your hero cards lined up at the top, and all the monster cards that you've defeated on the bottom. Let's take a look at the various types of cards that you'll be using throughout the game. Each hero and party leader card has a designated class. There are six classes total, and each one is represented by a unique colored symbol. Fighter, Guardian, Ranger, Thief, Wizard, and and bard. When attacking monsters, these symbols will come in handy as certain monsters can only be defeated by certain classes. Hero cards not only possess a class, but also an effect. In order to use your hero's effect, you must roll the two dice and score equal to or higher than the effect's roll requirement. If you roll less than the required number, you do not get to use your hero's effect and you do not get your action point back. However, if you play a hero card during your turn, you get to roll for the effect immediately without using an action point. There is no limit to the number of hero cards cards that you can have in your party or play during your turn. Party leader cards are each loaded with a special skill that'll give you an edge throughout the game. The best part is that you don't need to spend an action point in order to use their skills. A party leader's skill can be used once per turn, so long as the situation allows. Item cards are magical weapons and objects that can be added to your hero cards. Once played, you must equip it to your hero right away. To do this, slip the item card beneath your hero card. You may only add one item card to your hero at a time, and you cannot replace one item card with another. Magic cards are powerful spells with a one and done effect. Once played, it must be discarded. Modifier cards can be used to give you a helpful advantage. These cards can be played right after you or another player rolls the dice and can add to or subtract from the number rolled. You can use as many of these cards as you'd like on a single roll. Modifier cards do not require an action point in order to be played and must be discarded as soon as they're used. Challenge cards can be used to thwart another player's actions. When an opponent attempts to play either a hero, item, or magic card challenge their advances by playing this card. Both you and your opponent will take turns rolling the two dice. If your roll is equal to or higher than the other players, you successfully canceled their action and they must put that card in the discard pile. If your opponent rolls a higher number, they continue on with their action. Monster cards are the big baddies that your heroes desire to conquer. On your turn, you can attack any of the three monster cards that are face up in the center of the table. Attacking any one of these beasties is going to cost you two action points. If you're going to attack a monster card, you'll need to meet the requirements listed on the card itself. Some monsters require a certain amount of heroes to be attacked, which is what the gray H symbol stands for. Other monsters may require you to have a certain class represented in your party. Keep in mind that while your party leader card does count towards the class requirement, it does not count as a hero. When it comes to attacking these deadly creatures, you'll need to roll those dice. Each monster has a certain roll requirement. If you roll the dice and you score equal to or higher than the monster's roll requirement, landing yourself in the green territory, you slay the beast. However, if you roll the dice and land in the red territory, you suffer the consequences listed on the monster card. If you roll a number that falls between the red and green territory, you both walk away from the battle unscathed. Each time you slay a monster card, you gain the ability listed on that card for the rest of the game. Once a monster has been slain, take another monster card and place it face up on the center of the table. The first person to either slay three monster cards or end their turn with all six classes represented in their party wins the game. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this review video. Take care and I'll see you around.